Speed bag is one of the most fun pieces of training equipment in any gym. Learn to use it well and it'll be a creative and enjoyable part of your workout. We've all encountered situations where we wish for a little more hand speed. Hand exchange speed, the ability to change directions and rhythm are all enhanced on the speed bag. The way we're using this art these days, <laughs> this kind of motion requires a great change in hand speed and a great ability to change direction and rhythm. So we're going to start with some very basic drills on the bag and then we're going to build into motions that you actually use. Some of these motions come from our stick work and we're going to apply them on the speed bag so that the rhythm is enforced. Some of the motions come from empty hand and some of the motions are just to train a certain kind of muscle memory, a certain kind of muscle twitch. So we're going to start with the most basic rhythms and the most basic hand motions. First of all, about your speed bag. I prefer a 6x9 speed bag with a regular ball swivel. They make speed bags larger and smaller. The larger ones seem to be too slow to develop a good rhythm. The smaller ones seem to be too tight a motion and too fast a rhythm for most people. Pump your speed bag up till it's firm, but not so it's so hard you can't dig your fingers into it. You'll pop your speed bag. Okay, so let's get started with the basics. Now, you're going to start with a 1-2-3 motion. So the bag hits the back wall, the fore wall, and the back wall, and then you hit it again. We're going to start with a motion that uses three backhands. So we go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so we'll try to slow it down for you. One, two, three, one, two, three. As you can see, it's hitting three walls each time before I hit it again. Try to keep your other hand up by your face. As you know in your applications, you're going to keep this hand up for guarding. Okay, so we have a three backhand drill. Like that. Okay. And slowly build your rhythm up. lightly so that you're not making too tight a fist. Too tight a fist, the bag bounces a little bit quicker than you want it to and uh, you have a hard time keeping your rhythm. Now the next drill, we hit an inward and backhand. So you're going to strike an inward and then when it comes back you're going to strike a backhand. Then you strike an inward, you strike a backhand. Again we draw an analogy to our stick work because you strike an inward and you strike a backhand or we call it a number one and number two. If you don't do stick work that's fine, it doesn't have to be an analogy to stick work but it's convenient for our classes. So what you're going to do is strike an inward and backhand, inward and backhand, inward, backhand, inward, backhand. Okay, so I'm going to try to slow the, the uh, bag down for you. So it's going to strike three walls again. So we go one, two, one, two. Inward, backhand, inward, backhand, inward, backhand, backhand, inward, backhand, inward, backhand. Okay, roll your shoulders, rock your body back and forth. Okay, think rhythm. Try not to think about your muscles. When you're doing the speed bag, it's actually an exercise in relaxation. You have to relax certain muscle groups to let other muscle groups do their work. Um, if you try to think tension, or if you try to think speed, or if you try to think about your muscles too much, you're going to uh, uh, tense up and lose the rhythm. So try to think about the rhythm, listen to the da 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 and especially when we try to change rhythms to keep your muscles from tensing up every time we change, you want to think about the rhythm that you're generating rather than what your muscles are doing. Uh, this will be particularly important once you get fatigued, your muscles start to get tired, and uh, then you want to stay with the rhythm. Okay, so back to our drill. We go inward, back, in two, one, two, two, one, two, like that. Okay, slowly. Third 
drill is an inward backhand also, but you alternate your hand. One hand will be doing the inward, one hand will be doing the backhand. So you're going to hit this inward this way, and this backhand this way. And it's just going to hit, again, we're in our rhythm of three, so it goes one, two, three, one, two, three. And you go inward, backhand, inward, backhand, inward, backhand, inward, backhand. So you can change over any time and go on this side. So this, my left hand is not doing the inward, and my right hand is not doing the back. One, two, three, four, five, six, like that. Switch it over. And so again, slide it down. Inward, backhand. open. If you have a blink reflex, every time you hit, some uh, fighters will have a blink reflex. Try not to let your eyes blink. Keep your eyes open as wide as possible. Hit like that. When you switch over, to switch sides, you just use your inward backhand. Inward backhand, and I'm over on this side. Inward backhand, and I switch sides again. It's very important to work both sides of this drill because you're working different eyes. And uh, you want your eyes to pick up the speed of the bag, so your eye reflex is trained to be quicker. Again, so if we start with this one, we'll work our way backwards to the first drill, we'll combine them all. So we have our inward backhand, alternating hands. the speed bag before, turn off the video, find yourself a place where there's a speed bag and try these three drills first. Don't frustrate yourself with learning the more complex drills until you have the rhythm with the most basic ones. Now, uh, since you're not probably watching this video right next to a speed bag, you should simulate the motions in the air and then try to get a sense in your head for the rhythm. Take that sense in your head and those motions to wherever you find a speed bag and uh, uh, get started there. Okay, now we'll move on. Uh, hopefully you've come back now. You've turned off the video like I told you to. Or like a true martial artist, you're going to watch for the most complicated drill and try that first. Anyways, we're going to move on to the next thing. We call it a double hit. Okay, the double hit drill hits the bag twice as it bounces off the same wall. So it's only going to bounce once and then the, the second hand is going to hit it right away. So it's going to go like that. All right, so again, so this follows it through. It bounces once like that. Hit, hit, like that. Hit, 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 hit. It's a hard drill to slow down. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to start with my basic inward back end this way. And then I'm just going to let this follow through and pick it up again. Basic inward back end, follow through, pick it up again. All right, so this one just follows that backhand right into the bag. Follow the backhand in. Slowly pick up the rhythm. Now, when you do this, you'll want to hold your hand a little lighter or a little uh, looser so that you're not, your fist is not so tight it bounces too quickly for you. Again, it's, it's about rhythm, it's about timing, it's a more delicate thing than just running up and whacking the speed bag. Um, people to kick the speed bag, unless they can do a consistent rhythm with it. People like Bill Wallace, that sort of people can do a consistent rhythm with their foot up there. Most students walk up, take one kick at it, and uh, that's how we pop a lot of speed bags. So we put the rule in place. The same is true with your hands. It's a more delicate thing than just running up and whacking it with a tight fist. So fist a little loose, kind of get it going first. So we're going to go one, two, one, two. Follow it in. Follow it in. Follow it in. Over to the other side. Follow it. Follow it. Follow it. All right. Okay. 
once you get that, we work this in rhythms of one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we work all the way up to six double hits in a row. And you can do more than that. It just seems to be um, nonsensical once you go too high with it. It's to break up the rhythm of the drills that you're doing. So when you go like this, build up and as the speed builds up this is just going to offer a convenient break in the rhythm and then you'll move on and add the other drills okay now next one instead of an inward and a backhand inward and a backhand we're going to hit the bag with an overhead and a back fist overhead and back fist the motion is virtually the same we just change the impact point um, we use a lot of this motion especially in the Jun Fan part of the martial art um, uh, Bruce preferred a back fist, and it, it's still a, a, a big tool for us in a lot of the things we do. So, we're going to hit overhead, back fist, overhead, back fist. And you'll see that it produces a different feel on the bag. Okay, I'm back to my one, two, three rhythm. All right. And this won't be much of a change if you have mastered the other rhythm. Still working on your rhythm then this one's going to be hard because it bounces just a touch different from here to the back fist as opposed to the inward and back hand all right now we're going to use this as a springboard we're going to do the overhead and uppercut and then we're going to do the hooks okay this changes into a four point rhythm so we have this one one two three 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 four one two three four one two three four like that so we're going to hit overhead this way and then uppercut this way. Overhead this way, uppercut this way. And it's a rhythm of four. It goes one, two, three, four, and you hit it. One, two, three, four, and you hit it. So I go like that. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Now since I'm coming overhead anyways, I go right to my overhead backwards. I'll go on this side, over, uppercut. sets of as many as you want. Uh, fours, sixes, those seem to be the best way to break up your rhythm. Now, when you hit your hooks, you've got to find a way to get the bag going sideways. So in the middle of your rhythm, you're hitting it forward and backward on the board here. And we need to find a way to tip this bag this way. All right, now you can do it either by hitting the hook, which takes perfect time. Right? and the, the hook itself will turn the bag in that direction. Or you can cheat a little bit, which is what I do, and you can tip it slightly with your backhand. And as you tip it, it tilts that way, then you follow through and do your hook. Okay, as you can see, the hook is on a rhythm of four again. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. And it's also very common to throw a double left hook or a double right hook. Um, this is even more important as we're dealing with more and more of the grappling and the infighting because these short hooks, short uppercuts are, are the uh, punches of choice. So what you're going to do is you hit this way, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. When you feel comfortable with that, double it. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two.
worry. If you hit the bag and it goes off in the wrong direction, do your best to catch it. Catch it in flow if you can. If you can't, grab it quickly and start over again. Don't spend a lot of time getting angry at yourself because you find your muscles get tight. You won't be getting anything done after that. We have what we call the forward roll, which is just a, it's a, a quick wrap of, of, or a quick rhythm of, of short blows. Um, you can say that it simulates a straight blast. You can say it simulates a trapping motion. You can say that it simulates the knife tapping motion. What it does, it makes your hands move quickly. It is a one wall rhythm. That means it hits the wall only once. And you usually use the edge of your hand here to roll it out. Again, this is a hard one to do slowly, but I'll try to keep it under control. You see how it's bouncing only off of one wall, and I just allow my hands to go like that. All right. Now, slowly build up your rhythm, and be able to back it down as well. So slowly build it up, and back it down. Slowly build it up, and back it down. Slowly build it up. And back So, start this way. up the drills we're doing and adds a quick flurry of hand movement. Again, you're simulating a trap, you're simulating something going on that takes a, a very quick flurry. In Kali, for those of you who don't have the stick work, we have a number of different types of motions we use with double stick. Okay, you have a six count motion, which looks like this. Four, five, six. You have a four count motion. One, two, three, four. Um, and there's a ten count motion where they hit like that. Four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Sorry, I'm wrecking my own speed bag. Um, and we put these motions into the speed bag, and, and uh, um, there are probably other ways to categorize this, but we categorize it as a Kali type of a motion. So I'll show you the three most prominent ones we use. The first one is the four count. You're going to hit an inward. This hand is going to come from under your arm to hit a backhand. Then you're going to backhand again from here, and then this one will hit an inward. Then we start it all over again. So it's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Inward, backhand, backhand, inward, inward, backhand, backhand, inward. Very simple rhythm to get going. Again, start slow at this speed. Figure out which part of the hand you wish to hit with. Some of you are going to want to hit with the bottom part of the hand. Some of you will punch it. Uh, I've seen people that are more comfortable with the flat part of the hand. You uh, settle it for yourself. That's the four count. Now, we also do the four count on the other side so that you're not a one sided fighter. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Three, four. nearly the same thing, but we do it, it alternates sides very quickly. So you're going to strike an inward, a backhand, a backhand, and do the same thing from the other side. Inward, backhand, backhand. So you from under the arm here. Inward, backhand, 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 inward, and backhand. And the same thing. Please start just slowly build up your rhythm. Ten count. 
we go back to one of the first drills we did. We're going to use the inward and the backhand, but then we're going to follow it with the inward, backhand, backhand. So it goes inward, backhand, one, two, three, inward, backhand, one, two, three, inward, backhand, two, three, backhand, one, two, three. So again, I'll slow it down for you. Inward, backhand, inward, backhand, backhand, inward, backhand, inward, backhand, backhand, inward, backhand, one, two, three, inward, backhand, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, drills. Okay, so that's one section of things. Again, you're teaching the hands to cross uh, fluidly and uh, uh, you're, really, you're really training some of the trapping motions and things that we do. It's good for your overall conditioning. And the, uh, the motion here coming from the backhand to the backhand is excellent for your rotator cuff. So those of you who have had rotator problems, uh, the speed bag is a good way to condition the rotator. Um, don't do it when your rotator is injured, but when you get healthy again, go ahead and come back to your speed bag. All right, now we're going to start putting in the elbows. Elbow is a tool on your body that is not very dexterous. It is, um, it's a little awkward, especially for beginners if you've not thrown a lot of elbows. What I tell my students is for the combative use of the elbow, it's very important that you elbow things like the speed bag, like the focus mitt, um, small things that are very mobile. Uh, it's, it's very gratifying to elbow a big heavy bag, to elbow a tie pad, something like that. But if you're chasing combatively, if you're chasing the head or you're chasing the hand and you're trying to elbow a person, the target is moving all the time, there's other things coming back at you, and uh, it, it's really um, much less like a tie pad and more like that mobile object that we're hitting. Okay, so we're going to start with the most basic. You're going to use your inward backhand again. After the backhand, you're going to elbow and then backhand, go back to your rhythm. Okay, so inward backhand, elbow, and go back to your rhythm. So my right hand goes inward, backhand, you elbow, you backhand, and you come back like that. Elbow, backhand, right hand, inward, backhand, elbow, left hand. Inward, backhand, right elbow. Inward, backhand, left elbow. Inward, backhand, right elbow. Inward, backhand, left elbow. Inward, backhand, right elbow. Inward, backhand, left elbow. That's your first elbow drill. Same thing as always. Get it up. Start building your rhythm slowly so that your body can adapt. Remember that the elbow it does not have good dexterity to it usually, so take your time. Alright, so the second elbow. Instead of an inward backhand motion, you're going to do just the inward and follow it with the elbow. Inward elbow. Inward elbow. Follow it back like that. Inward elbow. 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 So that's the second. So you have two, the first two are to inward, backhand, and then follow over with the elbow. Okay, you'll need to get your rhythm back. Inward, backhand, follow with the elbow. The third one, inward, elbow. So you clear one time with this hand and then elbow behind it. One time, elbow, and then go back like that. Now, you can also elbow, sorry, you can also elbow with the same hand you're using as a punch. So the most common of these is to go punch, Elbow, backhand, punch, elbow, backhand, punch, elbow, backhand, or backhand. So all you're doing is you're rotating the pressure from the fist to the elbow and then to the backhand. Again, from the fist to the elbow to the backhand. Using that three-point rhythm. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, three, one. Excellent 
Schedule for Working Economy of Motion on your strikes. So we combine the first three elbow drills. You had punch and elbow. That was one I just showed. You have inward elbow. So the difference here again is you inward first and then elbow. drills to all the other things we've done so far. Now, uh, the last elbow drill, or last two elbow drills, is you also use the backhand elbow. So we're going to elbow with the forehand elbow, we'll call it, and the backhand. Forehand, and backhand, and the backhand. Okay, this will work the shoulder dexterity a little better. All right. You can also use a punch first. So punch, elbow, backhand elbow, punch, elbow, backhand elbow. All right, and you add these to your elbow drills. Many people like to separate the elbow drills from the rest of their drilling for one round. So you take out and do one of your rounds as you're working um, and do only the elbow drills because they usually aren't quite to the, to the same rhythm as the rest of your drills. The last one's in this system. You can do any set of triple jabs followed by any drill. So you're going to jab three times. One, two, three. If you cross, you might go into your uppercut overhead. Double strokes like that. I might go, sorry, I might go jab, 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 and follow with a series of elbow drills. Or I might jab, 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 and follow with a jab, 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 and follow with a series of hooks. You might jab, 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 etc., and follow with anything else. So you, lay, you take out and you triple jab, two, three, and then you follow through with any other drill. Okay. Again, just, just uh, the most important thing is follow the bag, try to cushion it, and uh, have fun with it. All right, so um, as you work through your list, keep them in little pieces, then put them all together. Flow as fluidly as you can. Have a good time. All right, go to work. Further enhance your hand speed, your sense of rhythm, and uh, the really fine motions that we do in this art. I'm going to offer you an alternative system for the speed bag. This is usually done for me personally in my warm up round or in my cool down round. It's a little harder to master the changes in rhythm, the, the motions again are a little finer, but uh, it's a great little alternative. It was given to me by a little old man who walked into my gym looked at me and said, may I hit your speed bag? And I grinned at him and I said, why sure. I thought he was just going to go up and kind of whop it once to see what it felt like and then go away. This little guy played music with the speed bag. He was amazing. So he taught me the four drills that he had and he left. It took uh, maybe a half an hour lesson and uh, uh, he never came back. I've never seen him again, but it was awesome. I'm going to pass it on to you. So the very first drill you're going to start with is our basic forward roll. So we go this way. Again, just turning your tape back on, remember I'm hitting only one wall. So it's a one wall rhythm, so we hit it here like that, and each time I'm using the back of my hand, get it going like that. Now, what he added to this was a motion where you go out and back with your hand. So you go one, okay, a two step rhythm. So we have a one beat rhythm. Try to slow it down for you. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. This way. And one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And last time. Okay, these were the first two drills. And the added things too. Then he also has an upward roll. This is an upward motion and you're bouncing it on the back side of the wall, the side right above your head. Make sure to tilt your nose back. Those of you with large noses, you're going to have to tilt back a little further. So you come this way. Then you let it go and came back this way. And move back into your motion here like this. Come back this way. Back into the motion here like this. The, uh, the 
third drill you already have, or the fourth drill you already have. So you use the double hit sequence like this. You've done this in your previous drilling. You add it to the drills we've just seen. So you do it, you roll from there. So, again, to review the four drills, we have the basic roll here, and out and back this way like that. So on my out motion, I'm hitting it this way. On the back motion, I'm hitting it sort of right above the thumb area here like that. Okay, interesting to note now, a lot of people are using a little shot that comes along like this. And uh, this was taught to me by Eric Paulson. It's good for uh, standing hitting the kidney, hitting the back of the head, and when you're on the ground, you're also going to use this motion quite often. So again, the motions from the speed bag are applicable, some of them directly to fighting, and some of them are more generic. It's improving your hand speed. It's more like a bench press. It's not that you're going to use this motion a whole lot, but the muscle set that you develop is very important. So again, forward roll, and out and back. Forward roll into upward roll. And forward roll, out and back, like that. Double hit, double hit, double hit, double hit, double hit. And you go to your forward roll, or you go from your double hit, and you're out and back. Build the rhythm slowly. rhythm up. Again, I recommend you use it as a warm-up or a cool-down round. It's kind of a separate system. I think that'll help you out a lot. Now, some training notes about your speed bag. Uh, the speed bag has to be fit into anybody's training program. Uh, hopefully your training program encompasses many kinds of, of different impact devices, different training methods, everything from sparring sessions, focus mitts, tie pads, uh, your sensitivity drilling, all of your grappling, your weight training, wooden dummy work, whatever else you're doing in your art, your weaponry, everything else goes in that mix. As you mix things, you're going to start to affect your body in different areas. And I believe the real questions, uh, you can call them JKD questions, you can call them martial art questions, uh, but the real questions that the martial artist today has to answer is how does the training system go together? What does your week look like? The questions about systems, styles, techniques, things like that are old. They've been settled for the most part and, and they, they don't interest me in any way. What, what I do like to hear about is, is different ways of combining training methods. On which day do you lift? Do you lift on the same day that you do the speed bag? How does the wooden dummy training affect that? Does your heavy bag work affect your grappling, uh, etc.? How do you combine all of those methods and make each week an effective training week? Um, as martial artists, we're training for the long term, and so uh, unlike a sport with a season where, where you have um, uh, a training that gets more intense towards the season, you have the season, then you have a rest period, we have this long term sort of whole life goal. Um, you have to watch the effects that your training has on your body or you will uh, give your body chronic injuries, you'll start running into tendon problems. Um, this is a legacy for martial artists. I know so many martial artists who have ruined their body by not so much overtraining, but training badly, the wrong combinations of things. Um, very often they allow their, their idea of intensity to uh, sort of override their good common sense about how to use their body. So again, the speed bag has to be worked into your, your, um, uh, your training methods and your training skin that you drill in three minute rounds, take a one minute rest. Uh, I do see people that, that uh, drill continuously for 20, 25, 30 minutes. Um, I personally think you need that rest just to re realign your shoulders, kind of relax, stretch your back out a little bit, and then go back and, uh, and start your drilling again. So three minute rounds, one minute rest is what I recommend. Um, as you get more and more intense on the speed bag and the thing starts to flow for you and it becomes a real solid rhythm where you're banging it out, it's going to be more and more of a workout. So again, you may have to adjust where you're putting it in your training. At first, it may be just a very mild kind of um, 
interesting exercise like juggling or anything else. And then later it may get to the point where uh, it is a real, uh, you know, five rounds is, is all you can do and you're really pouring your body into it. So I hope you have fun with it. I know I do. I think it's one of the most enjoyable pieces of equipment in any gym. So.